Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you may be in this world. We're heading across to the UK to talk to Dominic and Michael on a conversation to do with one of the best subjects, common law. Let's head across to the UK and conduct our little bit of international chat. Dr. Barry, London News, live in the U in Australia here, and it's um, 10 past 10 at night, and it's 10 past, well, my clock is wrong, it's five past in the UK, and I'm, we're talking to Dominic, and we're talking to Michael. Michael is um, running the, the Guardians in England, Guardians 300, and uh, we've come into contact because these guys are right into common law like I am here, and uh, Dominic, of course, as well. So over to you, uh, Michael, whereabouts? You're in a car, and obviously you're travelling. Where the heck are you? <laughs> yeah, we're on our way to Manchester, God's country. Um and, and I'm off to see to see uh, and have uh, lunch with my, my lovely daughters and grandchildren up there, of which I have seven grandchildren and three daughters. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're off up there. I'm, I'm on my way up there with Victoria, my partner, uh, and we're just about to have uh, a nice lunch with them. Well, that sounds pretty good, mate. And the and nice, nice cool weather over there for that, but I won't mention that. <laughs> well, you can always guarantee a little bit of rain whenever you go to Manchester. It's almost, you know... Manchester's great if you're a duck. It's like my dad used to say about Ireland. It'd be a lovely country if they could put a roof on it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got, I, I've got a question for you, Michael. The Guardians, how long have you been guys going? You were involved with the common law, the other common law court. Are you all one? Or, or where are you in, 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 in relation to, to uh, common law, which is you know the most important thing in the world at the moment to a lot of people? Well, well, I believe the common law is the answer because it's a system that is commensurate with humanity and also community. And of course, the government have tried to break down the family unit and the community as a whole with social distancing and some of its uh, behavioural strategies of which are all born in military training. When I look at the way we used to train and condition people in, uh, for combat, there are so, so many similarities, it's scary. And of course, the Guardian Street was established because of the way the government were governing and also because of the way the police were policing. Uh, and, and our main role is to provide training, one, to fill the gap of knowledge with regards to common law and use common law as, as, as a, a system um, to create momentum, which it's doing pretty well, and also to create some strategies by training peace officers or peace constables rather uh, in, in the art of defending their communities and, and, and standing up for them lawfully and peacefully. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly. Well, we've set up the, the common law court here. We've got, we've, we've gone to the sheriff aspect, same as America, because, you know, being ex-army and ex-police, I, I was constable long enough. And I, I, here it's, the Australians have a, a built-in resistance to the law from very early days, so the sheriff is uh, is quite accepted here, and we've only got three deputy sheriffs, which were sworn before a jury of their peers. But anyway, Dominic is very interested in, in getting heavily involved in common law. He's 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 he, he needs a little bit of guidance over to set one up. So, if, Dominic, if you got any questions for Michael, well, <clears throat> I've got loads of questions. Um, <laughs> the answers, I mean. You Obviously, I mean, I'm aware of where the, the sheriff comes from. It's the shire that you live in, and he was the reef of the village. And I try and tell people this. That's where the word came from, the shire reef. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's a good basis of uh, start of conversation um, to get people interested. Um, but people want more. They're like salivating. They want more sort of information. So this is where I am now. Um, how do people get involved in common law? And what, how will it benefit them? Well, I mean, ultimately, um, common law is about giving people an understanding of how sovereign they are and how powerful they are. That, that's what it, that's what, you know, when, when Alfred uh, consulted the tribes, you know, Alfred created the first professional army, really, uh, and also mm. consulted tribal leaders to come up with a system that was really quite simple. And, and it was, you know, the, the net result of that was cause no harm, loss, injury, and be honourable in your contracts. So yeah. all of that's very, very logical and reasonable. So and runs in line 
with what I would say is, is, is spirit, really. It's the spiritual element of our existence in so much that we honour each other, you know, um, and we honour each other at the level of, you know, you are no greater or lesser than I am. Mm. Uh, and therefore, we treat each other accordingly without sort of becoming all uh, Christian about it, to be fair. But in reality, it, it, it is God's law. And, sure. and whatever God is, is to you, because ultimately it's how we treat people, isn't it? That's, and that's so, and very so common law, that, that's the whole premise of it, Dominic, you yeah. know? This, this, I, I guess this goes back before statute law. I mean, is this the, the, the laws that were there before statute? Well, it is. I mean, if, if, you, if you look to the hierarchy of law, you would see that we start with divine law. So we, we, we talk about God's law. And common law really is, is, is man's law. So it's, hmm. it's our, if you like, uh, derivative. It's a derivative of divine law. But essentially, there is nothing higher. So if, if you treat people with honour and you are honourable and, and you cause them no la- harm, loss or injury, actually, there's a lot of logic in that. Uh, statute law came along and statute law was, was created. Uh, and anyone that, that reads Black Law's dictionary would, would soon know that it never gets to, 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 to give governments the power to take money off us and, and, and control Nothing less than that. Yeah, and I, I've been telling people the records go back to 1066 when, when William the Conqueror came in. He brought in uh, some Jewish people and they were bankers and, and great bookkeepers, hence the great the, uh, the doomsday book. So these guys were pretty good at records and the common yeah. law records were kept from them. So, And when the statute law started up at the inns in London and so on, forth, they, money was poured into this. And when money gets involved in anything, it's going to outrun common sense. And now that's it yeah. turned into a money money, money. money and power, Barry, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Money, so uh, Money and power amplify who you are. Yeah. And common sense is, is too simple. You know, the old story, keep it simple, stupid. I mean, yep. it's yep. just back to the all. basics. The people are the power and, and getting this, it's like getting them to change religion because sometimes they'll argue against you and then you say, hang on a second, from what point of view are you arguing? What do you actually know about the subject you're arguing about? And if they're honest, we all like to, don't like to be wrong. Just be yeah. wrong and learn. Yeah. Well, you, you only learn when you make mistakes, right? And, you know, there's no such thing as failure if you use every opportunity as an opportunity to learn. You know, when we stop learning, we're doomed, really. Oh, yeah. And, of course, when we stop questioning and what's happened... I would say over a number of years, certainly since the Second World War, we stopped questioning and we got too comfortable in an idea that the government that we have trusted serve us, when in reality they don't give two hoots about you. No, not at all. Well, serve themselves. All, yeah, it all started in Yakla in forty in forty five after the war, where they really divided the world up, and again the League of Nations came in later on and. They've been planning this to destroy us and they have succeeded. They've kept families, our families now that we had a shooting here in, in about uh, 10, 15 kilometers away from us. It was a, in, a, in a, a block of flats and I know the place quite well. And um, they, one, there was one old, one old chappy in his late eight, 70s or something and they really gave him a hard, the, the other tenant, tenants gave him a hard time because he wasn't vaccinated. It, to the extent he went in, he got himself, he got his gun, and he went, and he shot, actually shot two of them dead, and they, he was taken into custody, all because of this vaccine. So we don't have governments here in Australia. We have uh, corporations, federal and state, and, and politicians, which are nothing more than cr- criminals. We've convicted two of them at the moment, and the paperwork is, well, I hope to ha- it ends up in The Hague because they're, they're charged and convicted of genocide. So this division is something that it's, it's a worldwide thing to break any cohesion up. We're multicultural countries now, and it, it doesn't matter what color you are, green, blue or black. We've got to stand together because we're all on the Titanic. Absolutely, we are. And, and of course, you know, one of the reasons I created the Guardians 300 was because war fighting, which I believe we are in, is about two simple things. Momentum, creating momentum, and also using strategy to interrupt the strategy of your opponent. And as long as you can create momentum, 
and, and at the same time, when the hearts and minds of everyone around you and the, and the support of the local people, you're on a winning strategy. All right. Yes. And that's what common law is fantastic at doing because it isn't about one individual. You know, it's not about mixed stock. I don't give two hoots about that. You know what I want? Everyone learning from mixed stock? No, because that's not, that's not even realistic. You know, we, common law is about, it's about learning from each other having access to objective information and standing in your own conscience when you decide to take an action. That's, for me, is the whole, the whole point of it. Absolutely right, yeah. And I think it's just getting the message across, really, to the mass. I mean, this needs to be... I'm going to help with this, obviously, um, put this on my channel, but a lot of people need to take note of this, and that's where I'm trying to push this message across. Common law is the way forward. Yeah, and it's, and it's not about one, one organisation, Dominic. I think the main thing is, because people think they have to join CLC or Guardians 300 or, the, the, or, or any of the other organisations that are doing it. No, they don't. What, what they should do is learn enough that allows you to recognise that you are the power. Yeah, that's right. And that you it's are infinitely power. more powerful than, than the government. The power yeah. lies within yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's and I think... That's the scariest thing for the government, that. Yeah, well, we've <coughs> we struggled for a good while here because we had lockdowns. We were the most locked down states in, in, in Australia. But now we've got uh, the backing from, we've got a guy giving us a, a premises. We, we're going to have, he's putting full-time staff on there, volunteers. He, he will put some money into somebody that's necessary. We have enough room for have three, two courts going at the same time. So we've got a lot of backing. We have another guy going to put a, a sheriff's car on the road. And once we get that on the road, we'll have a number of people can ring for help and they'll come back to a, a human being who will answer. We'll organize this, the summons. I went out to a, a, a takeaway place and I went in the other day and they were, they were quite happy for us to go in there with that mask. I mean, down the country is a bit different. But anyway, went in and we read the menu. So about nine to 10 minutes, we went up and ordered, paid for it. And then I was asked to wait outside like a dog. And there was a dog outside. So you want me to join the dog and wait outside? And the guy says, oh, no. Then the, the, the lady who says, she, lady, she got tattoos all over the place. She reckons she owned the place. And she said, I had to wait outside. Well, so I'll comply with trespass rules and wait outside. So we, we just left and left the money. Anyway, I issued a, I issued a word of summons. And uh, the paperwork's here. And um, we gave her a break. If she apologizes with, by the midweek this week, we won't proceed with the action. But we will take her to court and uh, mediation and then court because we've got to make a stand and it doesn't matter which end is coming. Normal, normally we help businesses not pay fines and we've been successful so far and uh, but I'm not going to take any crap of anybody because they're, they're interfering with my rights. Humanity, caution and prudence and it's as far as I'm concerned I was it caused duress unnecessarily. Who yeah, wants and to of course, <laughs> if we don't hold these people accountable, Barry, yeah. because you see that the most dangerous group of people that exist in the world are the order followers and those that are incentivized to follow the orders. Um, you know, if you look at now GPs in the UK that are being paid to vaccinate children, oh. you know, they're, they're, they are earning some significant sums as practices. Um, and of course, these are people that are only reading one element of the research that's coming forwards that's the story we're giving anyway uh for me if we don't hold these people accountable you know this is one of the strategies that we deployed when i joined the world freedom alliance um because we started to issue notices of liability and also to to, to hold individuals accountable that are all in the decision making slots this is having quite a significant impact on them in the uk some of the tv stars and some of the people that are talking on, on on the TV is such as Dr. Hillary who tells more lies than a cheap watch. <laughs> so so holding these people accountable is, is, is a very important strategy. Well absolutely we've we've had a grand jury here and we indicted 17 it's on our on our YouTube uh, our website and the media this channel seven channel nine and ABC News, and I've, I've done a video today, which is going to be a little bit of fun. I've done it in fiction, so I'm in a fictional world, so I can say what I like. I've come from a real fiction world into a, a, another fictional world. Anyway, we, our next couple of court cases will be 
these people have been indicted, so these CEOs are going to get done in their private capacity for mediation. If they don't, they won't turn up, and then we'll go ahead with a court case on that. So we're going to make them yeah. accountable next. It's well, one quite powerful question, really. Um, with the dip, they call it the sheep dip, right? Um, making it making it mandatory, uh, which seems to be happening and coming across the globe towards the UK. Okay, this the sheep dip. Um, that that to myself is 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 a big wrong, and it's like being forced on you, and it goes against all the Nuremberg and your Bill of Rights and all your conventions and your human rights. That is wrong, isn't it? I mean, how do you get around that one? Well, this is where the momentum is important. If you get enough people standing up and saying no, then it doesn't happen. And it is as simple sure. as creating momentum around, one, understanding what the Nuremberg Code is. And as a veteran, you know, that's a code that's very dear to my heart. Because if I look at my forebears that went and fought world wars, they believed they were fighting for freedom. The Nuremberg Code was created for a reason. But equally, you could also say that the medical practitioners should also take responsibility at the level of the Hippocratic Oath. The yeah. whole point of the Hippocratic Oath was to do no harm. That was the first and, and never to force a medical intervention on anyone. And, and if you align that to the lack of informed consent, you know, now you're in real hot water. What I can't work out is when you consider how intelligent some of these people are supposed to be how they don't even pay attention to any of those elements that really they are directly responsible for and and and, and you know the application of those so for me i think momentum and strategy holding people accountable is really important and actually taking it to the door and but, but with the common law teaching people to understand in their, in their power and, and going out doing that but creating thousands and thousands which is what we've done already there are, there are yeah. tens of thousands that we've influenced already. Yes. That's good. Smashing. Yeah. I, I say to people, if you, some of my friends are still in the police force, I say, if you can show me anywhere in any act that mentions a man or a woman, it's only a person found committing assault. I've convinced, yeah. I've, I, I, well, we have IDs now to say that we're not, uh, we're not persons. But anyhow, M Michael, I'll let you go now because you're on your way to a, 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 having a good day out. But thank you very, very much online for coming on. And uh, we will definitely catch up as soon as possible. And uh, is it OK if I give Mike, uh, Dominic your number? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll hook up and have a chat. That'll be smashing. Yes, thanks, Michael, for the chat. Anyhow, today has been great. OK. Yeah, thank you, Dominic. We're going to go. Yeah, we're going to go off here. Don't go yet, Mike. <laughs>